My name is uh, Bas van der Veke. I'm uh, holding a master in bioengineering, forestry and nature management uh, at Kyle Leuven University in Belgium. Uh, and after that, I made a PhD on uh, climate change and how that affects ranges of uh, forest plant species. And since uh, 2009, I'm the head, the director of an NGO called the Regional Landscape, Kleine en Grote Neten, which are the names of, of two main rivers here in the region. And we work on uh, ecological uh, restoration and landscape quality at a, at a regional scale. And I'm also the president of, of the 16 regional landscapes there are in Flanders, the northern part of Belgium. Uh, so that's that's really nice. And in, in my free time as a volunteer, I'm also uh, one of the manager of a, a rather large nature, nature reserve in my region, Landschap de Liedemann, where I grew up. And now uh, as a manager, I try to conserve it. Well, uh, even when I was a child, I was really passionate about uh, yeah, nature and all living things, uh, walking in in the forest and in the nature reserve close close by my home with my parents with my dog and also at high school at high school and at university i was really lucky to have some inspiring teachers teachers of biology of chemistry and also at university i had some uh, really nice professors uh, I remember them ecology forestry in that way that that some of them are really uh, really became uh, best friends until now. I see them on a regular basis. Uh, every few months we, we meet or we go walking or we have dinner. So it's, uh, it's really nice to see that uh, by talking to your professors and sharing the same passion, they, they can uh, really become friends. Uh, so that's really nice. And also today I see uh, not only older people, but I see a lot of young people and students uh, being aware and taking responsibility about uh, yeah, some of the challenges we, we face as a society like, like climate and biodiversity crisis. And uh, also they, the young people, they inspire me today to do what I do. So that's, uh, that's really nice to see. This is uh, the best part of my job, that there is no typical working day. So uh, the one day, I can be in the morning in the field with, uh, with the local government or with farmers discussing on uh, restoring a river valley with, with my boots in the field and then change clothes. And in the, in the afternoon, I can be in Brussels discussing with the, the Minister of Environment about new, new law or regulations. So it's, it's really uh, there's a variety. And on another day, I'm discussing uh, with colleagues on new projects we want to do or of course do some administration or budget work on my organization but to be honest that's not my favorite part uh, of the job i like to be uh yeah making projects and and doing things but it's it's part of every job i guess and uh, and also for me it's i always wanted a lot of variation in my job and doing uh, the things i can do now on on different scales different levels uh really makes it happen so uh, i'm as a president of the of the 16 organization, I I can be uh, I can work on a on a national level, which is mainly about policy. And so, in, in my own organization, it's, which is on a regional level, I can work on really yeah on, on real life projects and doing things uh, together with stakeholders in my region. And as a manager of the nature reserve, which is really local, I'm really in the field doing nature management and. The combination of those three levels for me it works really well because uh well there are no two days that are quite similar and i like that uh, a lot i started a rather uh, general uh, education at, at high school uh, studying latin and math uh, there was no stem at that time otherwise i would have followed this i guess um and yeah, being inspired by, by some teachers, uh, I, was, I was quite sure I wanted to study at university sciences, but until the last day uh, for my inscription, I was doubting between uh, medicine and, and bioengineering. And uh, in the end, I, I chose the latter because I was looking at the programs and uh, that education had the, the broadest scientific program. So it, it left all options open. So I, I chose that one. Um, not even knowing what my 
specialization would be. But uh, after a few years, I find out that uh, being outside, being in the field, working on, on, on real life uh, problems was more my cup of tea than being yeah, in a really specific field, like in a laboratory or something like this. So I, I chose for the option of, of forestry and nature conservation, which I'm really happy about it now because I like really what I can do uh, today. Um, so, and after that, I, I, I made a PhD about climate change and how it affects uh, forest plant species in Europe, uh, which was at that time quite strange because at my university, I was then one of the first people working on the topic of climate change. Now there are many people working on it. It's really important. At that time, it was the beginning of the awareness of, of the importance of climate change. So it was. It was a, a challenge, but also really nice because I, I could talk to really important uh, scientists and so because uh, yeah, I was alone and the only one working on the team. But it was uh, yeah, it was a really nice um, yeah, experience. Uh, so when uh, a bit later I could I could uh, start with the NGO in in my own region. I started alone, and today I'm together with uh, like 15, 20 uh, colleagues working together with me and, and, and sharing the same passion about uh, biodiversity and uh, our environment and our region. So, uh, yeah, I'm really lucky to get there. For my job, I think I, I need quite a lot of different skills uh, as, a, as a head of the organization, of course, a lot of management skills, a lot of communication skills, but when I would pick out one or two, I think uh, curiosity would be maybe uh, as, as a personal skill, maybe maybe one of the, the most important skills I need, being curious about how planet Earth works or uh, how people think and how you can combine these in finding solutions for, for the problems we face today. That's what really makes good projects, I think. So, so never uh, losing your curiosity is really... Uh, really important uh, in my job. And also things like yeah, empathy and diplomacy are really, uh, really important. I have to, to talk to a lot of stakeholders, governments, uh, farmers, uh, nature conservatives. Uh, um, so it's, it's really important uh, yeah, to, to find solutions that are working for a lot of different sectors and people. So uh, for that, diplomacy is a quite important uh, skill in my job. You can work in a lot of different sectors with my uh, education because it's quite broad and, and well, with, the, with the science you can do uh, a lot of things. In the first place, I think yeah, both governments, uh, NGOs, also the private sector working on uh, yeah, both technological solutions or nature-based solutions which is more my cup of tea, uh, like ecological restoration, ecosystem services. Uh, that's one of the main sectors I see, but also like, like engineering, uh, teaching, which I like a lot uh, as a guest professor at some universities in Belgium. I like to, to connect with, with young people and students, and it's a nice way to, to make that connection. Um, but even other things like like politics or so, I can imagine. Um, yeah, also having a scientific background in the time frame we're living in now, it would be interesting also for people, for policymakers, and so. So it can be can, can be quite broad. Also, research, both academic or, or private, is is one of the options. So I think there are quite quite a few options open with a with a scientific background, which, which makes it uh, really interesting also for me. So the main challenges in my job, well, there are quite a few, but uh, to name one or two, uh, one is to convince both, both the general public and especially policy makers about uh, yeah, the urgency about some problems and, and, and also finding budgets uh, for defining the, pro the, the projects we want to do to, to solve those, pro uh, those problems, uh, which can be quite a challenge. But, but luckily these days the awareness about biodiversity, about climate, is, is arising in a way that we also see it. It's, it's, um, it becomes more and more easy to, to convince uh, 
people and, and policymakers about the teams we're working on. So that's that's nice to see. And 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 the other one I also mentioned before is is, is like diplomacy. Hey, you're really uh, eager to solve some problems to do uh, ecological restoration, uh, nature-based solutions, but you have to to find an equilibrium with with social and economic factors, uh, which are also important, like agriculture or other uh, industries. So when finding yeah, finding a balance and, and finding the right path uh, in the middle is sometimes a challenge too, but it's, well, actually making my job really interesting to find, uh, find the right, right path and to find the right uh, equilibrium. So uh, those are two of the main challenges I face. Well, I have uh, actually uh, three advices uh, for students uh, I would like to share. Uh, the first one I would say is follow your passion. If you choose for a career in a scientific field, it's not, not always easy because yeah, failing is part of doing science. Uh, your experiment can fail or your project knows a setback or there's a budget cut. But if you, if you do what you like, what you like the most and you're really motivated for it's 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 way easier to, to persevere so uh so really choose what you like and also about the specialization the the solutions uh, we need in the coming decades uh, in the 21st century will be really interdisciplinary and we need a lot of disciplines uh, together to solve solve the problems we face so so don't be afraid to choose uh, and, and to choose you like the most, then it's uh, then your career path will be yeah, way more fun and way more easy, I think. Uh, a second one is dare to dream big. Uh, if you now think I want to change or to save the planet, you can. Uh, as a student, you live in a really, really interesting time frame uh, where we will solve the problems we, we organized ourselves, like in the 20th century. In this century, we will we will see solutions for them and you can be part of it. So, so dare to dream big and, and dare to, to be a part of those solutions. And then the third one I would like to share is, is doing that, have fun. Uh, it's not because you're working or studying, studying serious business and serious matters, it cannot be fun. Like uh, also at my university when I was younger, the, the, the friends I made there uh, during the classes or in the bar in the evening, uh, the friends of, of then are now my professional network and I use them at a daily basis and it's really nice to see them again and to discuss our fields. So uh, work hard, but don't be afraid to have fun in the meanwhile. Nature-based solutions uh, will be really important uh, in, in the coming decades as we see uh, well, we're in a pandemic or hopefully the end of a pandemic right now, but the, the crisis that will follow, but both biodiversity crisis and climate crisis will be way higher uh, than, than the crisis we're in now. And well, nature-based solutions will be part of the solution and probably the, the highest part of the solutions. We will not, not solve everything by technology, for instance, and working together with nature instead of working against nature, which we did probably too much in the, in the last decades, uh, will be part of the solution. When we see now, for instance, at a biodiversity level, a species get extinct at, at a rate a thousand times higher than the natural rate. So we have to be quick if we want, if we want to, to save a lot of those species and, and biodiversity in the world and what that biodiversity means for us as a society because that's what keeps us alive and what, what gives us a lot of ecosystem services. So, like I said before, this is a really, really interesting time frame uh, to work on solution and I'm, I'm, I'm really optimistic about it that, that we will find solutions, but nature-based solutions will be will be a main part of it. So it will be really interesting to, to choose a career in that field. <laughs>